Hey guys, so people have been asking me how I managed to create this frigate with all the panels and small details as you can see here. I've been jumping between different methods to tackle this but uh, the one I ended up with is worth the share. So I started with a cylinder because what object screams sci-fi more than a giant donut? Duplicated that and turned it into another giant pastry thing in the back. The goal here is really to just play around with shapes and really, you know, let loose and don't limit yourself with thoughts of baking and food and more donuts. So I deleted some faces, struggling to, you know, get like these wing shapes to work. I don't even know why. I'm trying to put wings on a starship because there's like no air in space and, you know, just defeats the purpose. But who cares? It's my ship. So shut up. All right. So now we're just rotating stuff around. Really, again, just playing with the shapes. I'm filling holes, not even minding topology because uh, we'll fix that in ZBrush later. But I do mind uh, these hard edges, right? Like uh, I really want to bring out the hard edge shape if I need a strong angle. For example, like here in the wing, I, I do need these strong angles or these round shapes. So I'm, I'm polishing that as I go. Scaling this guy down again, <laughs> trying to aim desperately for this aerodynamic, you know, starship that really doesn't make any sense in space, but still going for it. Um, trying to create interesting bevels and decals here. So putting this giant indent on the main donut. So now it's an inverted donut. <laughs> didn't, didn't realize that the first time. So pressing on another indent here, I was thinking, you know, just adding more to the silhouette and really bring out an interesting block out of the, you know, starship. For all you overachievers out there, it would be great to actually stencil your work first and, you know, like go into Photoshop and uh, try and paint out the silhouette with just, you know, a black brush over a white background, you know, just play around with different silhouettes and try and block that out in 3D. And, you know, it would really make a world of a difference unlike me, you know, just playing with donuts and, you know, just bullshitting my way through all of this. But hey, it works. So here's the wing. I'm almost happy with this. Just adding another extrusion down here. Not that you guys are going to see this later. <laughs> I'm only like rendering one angle for this. Uh, yeah. And then I think I'm going to duplicate this. Yeah, let me just duplicate, rotate, uh, bringing it down smaller wing just so it doesn't look like a giant sperm cell in space. And yeah, I'm just playing with the silhouette. Um, I'm going to be pulling these wings out for, you know, for it to look more like a squid. And there you have it. And now it, it is important to subdivide this equally so you have like good spacing between edges before you do export this into ZBrush, which I'm doing now. So OBJ export and you should be good. So now let's open ZBrush, throw in our spaceship. Oh, that's nice. And then before we do anything else, I want to show you guys this little thing called Greeble. It's the term they use for these little, you know, sci-fi panels or like hull shapes they use this a lot on star wars especially on the millennium falcon and yeah so you can get these greeble textures right on gumroad uh, some are free some are not this one's free and we can just throw this into zebra ah fuck so if you didn't kill yourself uh we can continue you can open up uh the file again go into geometry first thing we want to do is testimate so I'll bring down the polygon size, but as you can see, like the edges, we lose those edges. So I undo that, deselect decimate, and then decimate again, and we maintain those edges. 
It's important to decimate just so we fix all the polygon problems we have with the mesh. So I split everything into different, uh, whatever you call this in ZBrush. Then I start UV mapping. So UV map group UV tiles. And then we jump into the surface noise. Now this is cool. This is what they use to make leather, like leather patterns. But what you can do is throw in our alpha, our greeble alpha. Increase the strength and now you can see like these patterns coming out. And if you connect them to the UVs, they create this very interesting effect. Just like you see on Star Wars. That's one sexy donut. So I'm playing around with strength and the alpha scale until I get something I like. Um, that's really what you have to do. Just make sure that your mix basic noise is at zero. So you don't have the you know default noise. You can also flip around the curve and get, you know, these cool effects. And really just mix and match to, you know, what you like. This is what I ended up with. I think it's really cool. Um, I duplicate this so I can go down to deformation and I can scale this down a bit because I want this to be like the skeleton of the ship. Um, yeah, and then I can go back and convert this BPR to Geo. And now it will turn into a solid geometry. As you can see, the point count just shot up to 7 million. So I'm taking the other one, the duplicated one, and then now I'm creating hull shapes using the offset to, you know, cull these faces and create holes in the mesh. So this is a cool hull shape I really liked. Um, I viewed it with the sub tool. And then now I'm going to convert it to... I will duplicate that first so we have another mesh to play with um, before I deform this. Gonna do negative five. So it goes in and we're you know working our way out of the ship. Convert that BPR to geometry. You get something like this. It's looking really nice. So one more, just one more layer. I want to fill up these holes so it doesn't look like a raw skeleton, right? Um, okay, so just, you know, increasing the alpha size worked for me. And this is what I ended up with. Now, I'm going to convert that again. Convert BPR to Geo, and this is the final result. Now, it does look a little fat, but that's only because I had my strength a bit too high. So now I'm taking the other sub tool, and then I'm UV mapping it with the group UV tiles. Waiting for that to load. And then I think I'm going to do the other one as well. So I don't have to do it over again. Uh, group UV tiles. And move on to surface noise. And I import the same Greeble texture. Uh, play around with the alpha and the strength. Uh, make sure your basic noise is zero. Uh, apply the UV. And then, yeah, play with the um, texture until you get a result that you like. And this is the one I liked. Now I duplicate that to save it just before converting BPR to Geo. And that's it. It's solid now. Time to do the next one. Again, going back to surface noise. But before that, you can actually copy your previous setting. So if I edit this, I can copy and go back to the sub tool that I was working on, like the main wing, the upper wing, and then go back to surface and then paste. Really cool. So now I have a starting point that I can just, you know, move around. And now I'm going to duplicate that and convert BPR to geometry. Oh wait, uh, inflate first. So negative inflate, geometry convert. Now this came out really strong. I did not like it. Uh, so I undo that and then bring down the strength before I convert BPR to geometry. Now this is very memory intensive. As you can see, my undo history ceased to record. So I do urge you guys to save all the time. Uh, you have no idea how many times this has crashed on me. So again, I'm working on these hull shapes with the offset and you know the size, playing around with the curve to get more detail in. And yeah, I really like this hull shape. 
and convert PPR. When you're done with that, you're going to end up with a ridiculous amount of polygon. So now what we have to do is reduce this. So I'm merging the, the sub tools and now I'm going into Z plugin decimation master and I'm pre-processing. Now what this is going to do, it's going to delete the faces that the shape doesn't need. So I'm going to Z plugin, reducing this to 2% because we have way too many polygons that we really don't need. It's a million polygons and this is a hard surface model. So you can bring it down to 2%. Yeah, 2% should be good. And then hit decimate. You'll end up with 2% of the polygons, but with the same silhouette. And that's all we care about for shapes like this. So I'm going to do the same with this guy. Going to merge him, merge down on the sub tools until I get the main donut into one big donut. Damn, what's with me and donuts today? So Z plugin, um, decimation, pre-process current. And when that's done, it's not this fast. This is edited, right? So you guys should wait. It takes a while. It takes a long while. And then decimate 2%. Now the bottom one, convert BPR because I forgot to convert it a while ago. And then Z plugin, uh, pre-process current. And then finally decimate to like 10% because this is a smaller poly count. And that's great. Um, should export this now. So export OBJ. And let's throw it into Maya. All right. So I'm going to hide this guy. Uh, put him in his own layer. Hide him. And then import the... Uh, 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 ah, there you go. And da, 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 da. there you have it, guys. You have your own space frigate in Maya. So now I'm separating this so we can get into the, you know, you can get inside the hull and you can see the skeleton inside. Really cool. If you, if I put more time into this, like I'm sure I could come up with something really amazing. But you know, for the sake of this video. Um, yeah, this is what I ended up with. I'm just shooting in some blins to separate the different layers. So we see that separation, uh, just, you know, dialing these colors down. Mm, maybe I'm going to make this dark and then make this even darker. Started from the donuts. Now we're here. Yeah. Uh, make this blue. Uh, so many choices. Yeah, blue. I think blue is good. And then trying to play around with the combinations. Yeah, no, that doesn't look good at all. So I just ended up with the, you know, first arrangement of things. And then now I'm going to render this. So let's throw in a directional light, open redshift, hit play. And you get this shadow. It's all shadow. Let's throw in some nice GI brute force. Open output, assign a redshift environment. Get, you know, a space panorama of stars in there. Pump up the exposure a bit. Throw in a backplate of the earth. And now you should have a really nice looking spaceship to explore what has never been explored before that, that was star trek right yeah yeah I, th I think that was star trek so now i'm playing with eccentricity and you know um trying to smooth out those reflections lower the intensity uh, especially the one here down inside because like this shouldn't be shiny there you go now I'm going to show you guys this neat trick. Um, let's go into our color and throw in a layered texture, throw in a light color in the back. And then in the alpha, I'm going to throw in a curvature node, redshift curvature. Uh, Arnold has it too, if you guys are using Arnold and just play around with the settings until you get the edges to show like this is like the burn marks, right? When, when this enters an atmosphere or, you know, it's been to different galactic battles. So yeah, play around with color and that's it. This is it guys. I hope this helped. I really enjoyed 
I really enjoyed making this one. Um, if you guys have any questions, shoot up in the comments below. If you want to see me texture this, um, hit subscribe. All right, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.